Hello guys, welcome to Steve Knows, and let's talk about the future of VR, because after Oculus's presentations, things are getting pretty, pretty spicy in the virtual reality space. So if you want to know what's around the corner and what headset you should potentially get, check out this video. We're going straight into it. First is forward compatibility for future quests, which means any future release will not affect your current generation. Which is crazy, they're even promoting this because they haven't even announced new hardware, which they're probably gonna drop on us next year. I can't wait. They've also stated that the Quest has $20 million in game sales. That statistic is awesome. That's $5 million a month on the Quest store. This shows the Quest is getting consumer attention, which is needed for virtual reality progression, which allows them to innovate faster and better. It also explains why they're really focused on this headset, because the Rift S kind of got taken behind a barn and shot. One of the spiciest topics is the Quest has a November firmware update where you can connect it to a PC via USB-C cable and turn it into a PC VR headset. This is arguably one of the most shocking reveals to date, but I did stand up and applaud this one. It's incredible news. I lost my mind, even though I am a victimized consumer because I just bought the Rift S because I couldn't play the Quest on my PC. Well, at least with great visuals and low latency, I couldn't. To only find out a month later, I didn't need to. This is achieved by using a USB-C cable to create a tethered connection to your computer. Facebook did say they could use any wire, but they will be selling their own that has been perfectly optimized for this kind of thing. It's a fiber optic cable for $79 and it's five meters long. There was speculation whether or not you're going to have full access to the PC gaming library like you currently do with the Rift, but that has been debunked and you're going to have access to everything that Steam VR, Vive port and the Oculus exclusives via the Quest. A couple of my friends attended the event, so a shout out to Ninja and Thrill, and they stated that the quality on the Oculus Link is not as good as the Rift Native. They said it's good, but it's not better, which is shocking because the Quest has a higher resolution screen, so I thought it would be superior. So what's going on here? This spells bad news for the Cosmos as well, a mid-range price headset without the specs to back it up. All the features, high-end gamers are going to take the index, and now the lower-end consumer who can't afford to spend all of that money will go for the Quest for only $3.99 to get a standalone headset and a PC VR headset. It's such a bargain. Next is the Quest hand tracking with no remotes. This one, I kind of lost my mind. I lost it. As soon as they introduced this, I was stood up. The fact that you're going to have hand tracking with no additional hardware is the future of virtual reality, but it also really highlights the infancy of the industry. It's all being driven by devotees, enthusiasts, and passionate people like you and me. You may be aware of Leap Motion and the abilities that that provided. This works the same way. You're using the Oculus cameras to track your hands and your finger movement. This would translate into controls in game. I think this is why the Quest is also getting you passed through Plus Camera, because it will improve the vision and in turn improve the tracking. The functionality is only available if developers enable it via the SDK, which does raise some questions about how this is going to be integrated, because devs seem to have trouble now making great games without this additional work. So I expect this to be a slow burner, and we get games that are specifically designed to show off this tech before it matures and it's widely adopted. But nonetheless, this is a step in the Oasis direction. Having the ability to track hands to increase our immersion like never before, we can throw, grab, and interact with objects in the best way possible. However, as this technology stands, we do lose feedback. As the moment if we use the remote to shoot a gun, we get the feedback, the vibration. If we use hand tracking, we lose that. So I'd like to see wearable gloves, perhaps, where we can still track the hands because it's a glove, but we also get the interaction and the feedback of the environment to feel temperature, hot, cold, weight, rumble. That would be perfect. That is the future, the direction of virtual reality. Because they've all, because all of these big companies have submitted patents recently around this area about feedback wearables. It's, it's growing. Again, people who tried this at OC6 said it's not ready for things like Pavlov, where it's fast paced, but more with application interaction. So selecting apps, moving to choose your Netflix film, hitting play, pause, that sort of thing. Oh, the next one. Let's enter the future where Facebook control our minds. With neurological interfaces being brought to us by Control Labs, Facebook have invested in this brain scanning technology that monitors nerve signals and relates these signals to computer readable actions, such as your intention of an action such as holding up your arm. Do you think it? It happens. 
It sounds so sci-fi. This tech isn't available tomorrow, yet they made us aware of their vision and what they expect this technology to provide. But it raises questions because Facebook are not known for being private. And they're expecting people to wear this technology and use it, providing Facebook with data of their brain signals and their intent in certain situations. And what if this goes the other way and Facebook start putting actions into our mind? What, they're not just reading, they're also writing into our brain waves and then we turn into the quest army of Facebook. <sighs> it's the new Doctor Who demon. Don't think. Instead of don't blink, the weeping angels. You may have got it. We also have the Pass Through Plus camera coming next week and Pass Through button activation. The quest is getting Pass Through Plus, which means we will get better, closer to live visuals via the external cameras. As Pass Through currently warps the world around you, the Pass Through Plus counteracts this and provides us with vision that's closer to real life. It definitely helps keeping the motion sickness down, not having the fisheye like Pass Through. We also get the activation of Pass Through on demand, so if we double tap the home button, it will activate Pass Through camera so we can answer the door or get a drink without having to worry or take our headset off. We can finally live in these things. So thank you, Facebook, for this convenience. Next is Go emulation and also Go games be upgraded to the Quest version for free. So in the same talk, we got forward compatibility and an example of backwards compatibility. So going forward, all the games that currently work on the Quest and its backwards library and the future library is all going to work on the same system. Not like Xbox and PlayStation 4, where the architecture is so vastly different, it makes the emulation harder, and we have to spend years of people complaining before we actually get anything. And the Go has a huge library of games that people have invested a lot of money into. They don't just want to see it go. So now adopters can feel confident that buying a Quest, being on Oculus, isn't going to be a short-term benefit. It's going to last. And also the free Go to Quest game upgrade, it's like a gift. Especially since games are more expensive on the Quest as well. We've seen ports like Gun Club be a little bit more expensive on the Quest. So now you can play the games that you adored and loved and owned as a definitive version at no cost. A brief touch on the dev tools here, as a consumer it doesn't mean much to us, but as we dig deeper you can see the benefit that it provides to us. Allowing these developers to have metrics and greater control over their game development means that we get better games, they run better and they look better. And these metrics can also help the developers understand flaws in the application structure. So long term, this is gold. They mentioned things like RenderDoc, a frame capturing tool, OVR metric which is an Oculus mobile tool. We haven't seen an update on this though since February I might add. Vulcan support for the huge gaming engine Unity. We get GPU profiler to understand the GPU status. There is also a YouTube studio for developers that release their games on the Quest Store, which is adding some sort of gamification for these developers, which may make them release even more games. They are even allowing mixed reality on the Quest, but this currently needs additional hardware. But soon it will be native and hopefully as a consumer we can make use of this because this is what made Windows Mixed Reality headset appealing to people. If we also get this on the Quest, why would we get anything else? It has all of these features bundled into one. You can see the Oculus are packaging everything into one little product. The next technology that blew me away is because I wasn't even aware it was a thing is the virofocal technology. This is improving the visual fidelity at a given depth or increasing the field of view. Some of you may not realize, but when you bring stuff close to your face in game, you're actually changing the lens in the headset to keep the game looking great. It's like going to the optometrist where they say lens one or lens two, better or worse, but at a fast, unnoticeable pace. The difference of this Half Dome Prototype 3 is that they've removed the motorized system completely and they now got a six layered liquid crystal lens that can shift into 64 different planes, allowing it to be the fastest, the lightest, the smallest, the most detailed dome yet by a mile. And it also increased the field of view by 20%. So the Quest has currently around 90 degrees in its field of view. It would now be around 108. This is progress. It really seems that Oculus are driving to be a leader in this space. They're not just thinking, how can we make money? They're thinking, how can we create the best product? How can we drive innovation in this space? How can we create a great brand? How can we make the consumer think of us as the place to go for virtual reality? The next final feature we hear about is virtual reality avatar creation to truly make realistic interpretation out of our movements in game. They have prototypes of additional cameras on people's headsets that are monitoring people's facial expressions. This is then translated into digital visual representations. For example, your virtual reality avatar would start moving 
moving its face in the same way that you do. So when you smile, it will smile. When you talk, it moves its mouth at the same time. This is the start of creating realistic avatars to improve our interaction in game. 80% of communication is via body language, and that's not expressed in virtual reality right now. So combining this ability with being able to scan your avatar of yourself to put as a character in game as well, is going to be the best social interaction in virtual reality we've ever seen. So okay, that's it from me for the future of VR in the Oculus space. They are really pulling innovation out of the bag at such an affordable price, even though they have disowned one of their child, the Rift S. Took it behind that barn, shot it, left it, they didn't even care, but we can mourn together. Please stick around for my next video where it's a deep dive on the Oculus Link so you can understand what's actually occurring. If you're a Quest owner so you know what you're getting into, if you're a Rift owner so you know that it's not actually all that it seems. Thanks for watching, Steve knows. Happy gaming. Good day.